You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he said nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Terry Burgess. Dr. Burgess, welcome to the program. Well, thank you for having me. Now, before we get into today's topic, because I guess you do more than just dental implants, and, and, and you have a your practice where you kind of do everything right there. So who is the typical patient that you see? Well, our typical patient is, is, you know, everybody. We see people from the very young to the very old and everybody in between. And we do, you know, all the procedures that you would typically think of in a, a general dental practice. But we also do a lot of other things, Randy, uh, a lot of cutting edge things uh, from, we, for example, we have a lot of lasers in our practice where we're doing uh, uh, procedures called LANAP. Now, you use these lasers to kill gum disease, to stop it. Correct. Correct. You know, the typical person comes in with, when we talk about gum disease, they've got uh, bleeding gums, they've got loose teeth, they've got uh, bad breath, things of this nature. Instead of the uh, technique used in the past where we would uh, cut the gum tissue, that's just horrid. I mean, we don't do that anymore. We use a laser to go around the teeth and uh, sterilize the gum tissue. We kill the bacteria that's causing that uh, periodontal disease or that gum disease. We also do dental implants in our office uh, where we're replacing uh, one missing tooth or it might be that somebody's mouth, uh, unfortunately they have several bad teeth and they just need uh, multiple extractions. And so we can go in and do the extractions, place dental implants and- uh, uh, It's like getting your teeth back? Absolutely. It's the closest thing to having your natural tooth. So is this a future of dentistry, like maybe 10 or 20 years or whatever, 50 years, that nobody will be wearing like a loose fitting denture? Like everything will be attached to dental implants? Well, Randy, I would like to think that that's what's going to happen. I, okay. I would, especially in this day and time where uh, people are becoming more aware uh, through social media, through the internet and things of that nature. They're learning more of their options. Uh, so yes, I would like to think that's the, the, the direction we're headed. So how long have you been uh, involved with dental implants? I've been involved with dental implants for the last 20 years. Typically the way it's done is uh, I would refer somebody to uh, an oral surgeon or a periodontist and they would place the implant and then they would come back to me and I would put the crown on top. Uh, but and that's for, how it's normally done even now today, is that right? Probably 90% of the time. Okay. That's okay. the way it's done today. I quit doing that about five years ago. Uh, I just, you know, my main objective is what is this going to look like at the end? You know, I want a beautiful result for the patient. It's important to me that I place the implant so that I have the control on uh, the end result. I want a beautiful uh, uh, smile. I want the restoration or whatever we're doing for the patient. I want it to be as good as possible. So doing both parts gives me more control and better results for the patient. So, and do they look like real teeth or do they look like a denture? Oh no, they look like real teeth, absolutely. So how soon can you eat after it's done? You could eat that very night. You, there's no reason why you couldn't. You know, it might be that uh, depending on where the implant is placed, you know, we, we start with uh, softer foods, but you know, there's no reason why you can't eat immediately. Now at the top of the show, we said no more dentures, that nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. You believe that? Absolutely. Uh, you know, if you really understood uh, what a denture was like, uh, it's, it's nothing like having your natural teeth. Uh, you've got, you know, an upper denture, you're hoping suction holds it in place, a lower denture, you know, it's just floating there. It's gravity that holds it in place. You don't chew your food like you normally do. Uh, with, I, know, I know a couple of denture wears. Okay. They never complain. <laughs> well, why would they complain to you? Uh, okay, I mean, good point. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I mean that respectfully. They're not going to complain to you. They come, they complain to me. Uh, uh, let me tell you what the life of a, of a denture wear is. Uh, I mean... You know, if you can wear your denture, uh, probably 50% of the people are having to wear uh, some type of dental adhesive. Uh, it's a huge market for dental adhesives, you know, maybe one billion a year. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's not very pleasant. Uh, and so you're having to use denture adhesives just to keep the dentures in place. Um, let's say uh, you go to a restaurant. 
uh, you and I sit and look at a menu and we start, you know, going through looking for, well, that looks good and this looks good. That's not what a denture wearer does. A denture wearer looks at a menu and it's like, what can I eat? Not what do I want to eat? Uh, big, big difference. So they're not really chewing their food. I think you told me that on the phone. Oh, no. Just kind of rubbing it together? Oh, no, no. You know, when we, we when a person with teeth chews, they, they, they chew in a pattern, kind of a teardrop pattern. When you have dentures, all you're doing is just basically up and down, your, you're just mushing your food. Uh, not very pleasant. In fact, maybe 10 to 15% of the chewing ability of a natural person with, with teeth, so. Okay, now, are there a lot of denture wearers where you, in your town? Well, unfortunately, there you're are. You're by Madison, right? You're, you're in Huntsville? I'm in Mad the Madison-Huntsville area, yes. Okay, okay, and, and then, I mean, are there a lot of denture wearers? Unfortunately, there are. Uh, I would say there's probably tens of thousands of people uh, that are wearing dentures, upper and lower dentures right now. If we're gonna talk about people that are missing six or more teeth, I mean, you know, you could take a, uh, a college football stadium. Uh, you could probably fill it 10 times over, you know, with people that are missing six or more teeth or shortly. And those people are headed for dentures. They're headed to dentures. So it is a huge, huge problem. Well, if they're so good, okay, let's talk about the denture wearers for just a moment. Or people that you can't save their teeth and they have to go. If dental implants are so good, to get, where you get a permanent set of teeth that don't come in and out, why aren't they all doing it? What's your take? Well, my take on it is that people just don't know what their options are. You know, you don't know what you don't know. Uh, stop and think about it. If you're wearing a denture, you don't go to the dentist. You don't come to see me. Okay. I mean, you're out of the system. Uh, it, you know, it might be that you haven't been to the dentist in seven or eight years. And the only reason why you're going back to the dentist is because you have uh, a sore spot or maybe your denture is getting loose and you need to have a, a reline. And so, you know, you reluctantly go back to the dentist. Because nobody likes going to the dentist, right? They don't like going back to you the dentist. You must hear that, right? Like, no offense, doctor. What do they say? Well, I hear it all the time. They say, well, I like you, but I don't like coming here. You know, I, I understand. <laughs> Do you have a comeback for that after no, all these years? No, no, I don't because I get it. You know, right. I understand what they're saying. I, it doesn't offend me. Um, I just try to, I try to make it as pleasant as I can. Okay, good. Now, I interrupted you, but okay, so they, they, they put off, they, they don't go, the denture wearers don't go to the dentist anymore. And, and you were saying when they finally do go in, it's because of a sore spot or whatever. Okay. So they're what? They don't know their options? They're not being offered? Like dental implants, you think? Uh, no, I don't think they are. I think that they go back to the dentist and it, it is just uh, uh, in the process of going back, they don't like it. And, and just unfortunately, their options are not being discussed. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's, I think that's one of the, the main reasons why uh, that they aren't pursuing it is that they just don't know their options. Uh, let me tell you a second reason why I think people don't pursue it, don't come back to, uh, to see us. Uh, your life before having a denture was not very pleasant. It could have been very traumatic. You, you might have gone, you know, 10, 15 years, 20 years in a cycle of, let's say you went in and y you had a, a cavity, so you got a big filling put in. And that lasted for a while, and then all of a sudden it broke down. You had to have a crown, and then all of a sudden, then you had to have a root canal. And then, you know, after a while, the root canal fa failed, and then you had to uh, have the tooth extracted. This was just an ongoing visit after visit after visit of going to the dentist and then ultimately having the tooth extracted. And so it's it was, a lot of money, obviously. Well, it's too. a lot of money. It's a lot of visits, a lot of time. It's a lot of... Uh, Pain, it's obviously. a lot of it's it, it's a lot of pain. I mean, these people are living with sensitivity. They're living with pain, and they finally reach a point where they just get exhausted. They get just fed up with everything, and they say, "I've had it." And like, take out my teeth? They, absolutely. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that, and it just breaks my heart to hear it because I mean, I know what that means for the patient, and I don't think they really understand what that means. Um, but I I get it. I understand what they're saying. I understand their uh, frustration. So, you know, they just, they're, they're frustrated and they just, they say, well, just take the teeth out and I want a new set. And now this is the opportunity to talk about dental implants and let them know what we can do uh, to either save some of their teeth uh, or if it has to be that they go into a denture, then we can support it with dental implants and it can be you know, a wonderful option. Like locked in, like a full arch of teeth, just snapped in, snap out, or, or fixed, that don't come in and out? Either, okay. either one. I mean, we can do anywhere from two to four implants, 
and have the denture snap into place, very stable. They can, you know, uh, be comfortable, chew what they want, or we can give them a uh, fixed set of teeth that do not come in and out. I mean, it's just like they're natural teeth. So and they and they look good. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You wouldn't know it if you were looking at them. So, how old can you be to get this done? Uh, well, there, that's the wonderful news. There is no age limit to it. I mean, you you could have. Uh, let me put it this way. I've, I put an implant in someone the other day that was uh, 84 years old. So, I mean, there's no age limit as long as uh, they're healthy. Now, why would an 80-year-old want to do this? Well, let me put it back to you this way. Why wouldn't they want to do it? I mean, everybody wants a good quality life. You know, they want to be able to smile. They want to be able to laugh. They want to be able to chew their food. Okay. Uh, they want to have a good quality life. And I mean, nowadays, people are living so much longer. Uh, I, I can think of somebody right now that is 85 years old and could literally work circles around me. And okay. <laughs> so what I'm trying to get at is that people are, age is, is not a limiting factor anymore. People are very viable. They're very uh, mobile, very healthy. And they want the same things that anyone else does. So take me through the process. Somebody comes in and either their, their teeth have to go, can't save all their teeth, or somebody that's already wearing a denture. Okay. What are their options? We can take somebody uh, that is, uh, we can put two implants in, uh, say the upper and two implants in the lower, and I can place a denture that is very stable uh, that will allow them to eat what they want. Uh, so that is a very positive. That snaps in, snaps out. It snaps out. in and snaps out. Okay. Uh, for example, even on the upper, we can take the plastic out of the roof of their mouth. Uh, so it opens that up. So now they can start uh, sensing the temperature of their food. Uh, helps with the taste of their food. Uh, wonderful option. However, there is a con to it. Uh, it is stable, but it could be even more stable. So when we place two implants with a full arch of teeth on the lower uh, or on the upper, uh, it's a wonderful option. There is a downside to it in that it can have a little bit of movement, and so we can solve that problem by placing uh, an additional two implants. We do uh, four on the top and four on the lower, still with a full arch of teeth. Uh, and what can they eat with that? What can they eat? Yeah. Oh, they could eat anything they want from, you know, being able to bite into an apple or eating carrots or, you know, any type of salad they want or, you know, peanut brittle. I mean, Randy, it's just they can eat what they want. So let me tell you a story. I've got a gentleman that uh, came in. He had an upper denture. He had uh, lower teeth. He had six teeth right here is all he had. He had someone had made him a lower partial in the past and he couldn't wear it. In fact, I don't have a clue where that partial was uh, or is right now, uh, but he came in and we've placed four implants and we have made him uh, a lower denture that now is snapping into place, is very stable and solid. He's able to eat anything he wants and is just, you know, he's very, very happy with the end result. So chewing, uh, I mean, they could eat like salads. Oh, with this kind of thing. Absolutely. Could eat anything. In this example I gave you, I honestly don't know how he ate anything. I mean, can you imagine only having six teeth on the lower and you, you're not able to chew your food? You're basically just uh, mushing it a little bit and then swallowing it whole. So when I give them a fixed set of teeth that do not come in and out, I mean, they're able to chew anything that you or I could chew. There, there's no limitations. I mean, they could chew, you know, anything from peanut brittle to nuts to... Uh, being able to, you know, bite into apples. Uh, it seems like they all would do it, by the way. So the main thing is they're just, they don't know their options? I just don't think they know their options. I, I think also... If, go ahead. Well, I think also there's things, you know, when you look at the life, I and mean, we talked about the life of, of beforehand, so, you know, of just that endless traumatic cycle of, of, you know, trying to save your teeth, and they finally reach a point where they want to stop. So the last person they want to come back to is the dentist. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and then you've got other things, uh, like they remember how much pain they were in. So, you know, they're thinking, I don't want to go back into that cycle. I, I'm fearful of the pain. It does seem painful. Well, it would seem like it is, but, you know, nowadays, you know, 
Well, first off, there's no nerve fibers in the bone. Okay. And so I can place that implant in the bone and that doesn't hurt. We have little, uh, uh, where the pain comes from is in uh, cutting the tissue, and we do very- So the gums. The gum tissue. And so, you know, in the past, you know, gum tissue was cut, you know, quite a bit. Now, we just make a minimal incision uh, to expose the bone and place the implant, so there's minimal discomfort associated with that. So during the procedure, if there's, you know, if, if a patient is, is fearful of the pain, there's so many things we can do to alleviate that. I mean, we can sedate the patient uh, by uh, giving them medicine that they take before they come to the office. Uh, they have little to no memory of the procedure. I can, you know, think of countless patients that have come in and, and they're, you know, anxiety ridden, uh, nervous. Uh, we give them the medicine and they come in and just do wonderful. In fact, I mean, they're not asleep. They, I can talk to them just like I'm talking to you. And so they're numbed up. I mean, during, they don't feel anything during the procedure. They don't feel anything. Okay. They don't feel anything during the procedure. And, and the, I get tickled because afterwards when they come back, I ask them, do you remember anything about the procedure? And they rarely remember anything. And if they do, it's just a very small amount. You know, they don't re really remember the procedure. So they, they, they get a ride home. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and so what about... It, maintenance, like how often do they get them cleaned or do they clean them themselves? How does it work? <clears throat> well, they come back into the office just like you and I would come into the office to have them professionally cleaned. Um, so it's, you know, they're on a cycle of every, you know, say six months or, you know, just whatever fits their situation uh, to keep them clean. So if they knew how good it was, right? Let's say they could, you take denture wares and you say, hey, you get a, a, a try-in over the weekend for a snap-in, snap-out set of teeth. Yeah. They couldn't go back, Oh, in your opinion. I don't think they would. I don't see how they could. I, I just think if they were to have, you know, just a few minutes with a, a denture <laughs> a supported. Minutes. Yes, yes. I, and, and they would never go back. Never go back. So no more dentures. You're going to wipe them out where you are eventually? I'd sure like to try. I would like for people to uh, be able to know their options and and be able to pursue this. Now, we should mention, I guess Medicare here in the U.S. does not cover dental implants. Even if you have the best insurance, does not cover the whole procedure? No, no, they do not. And that's unfortunate. But, you know, fortunately, we have uh, modes of, uh, of financing that helps patients to afford uh, So people treatment. are financing these procedures? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very much so. You know, it's interesting what motivates people to do this. I mean, some people come in and, you know, they just want to be able to chew their food better, uh, enjoy it, uh, and then you've got patients that come in and they're not concerned about that. They're more concerned about just having a pretty smile. Uh, it's interesting that the patient that comes in that uh, just wants to be able to chew their food better, uh, they go out and then people start complimenting them about their uh, pretty smile. Okay. And, and so it's like, well, yes, I do have a pretty smile. So, you know, they get the best of both worlds. So, you know, that's that is very much a plus. Then you've got the patients that they come in and all they want is a beautiful smile, and then all of a sudden, uh, they start realizing, I'm chewing my food better, I'm enjoying my food, I can eat anything I want. And so, you know, where they came in wanting to smile, now they're able to fully enjoy their food. So they're getting the best of both worlds too. So. Now, with, with denture wares, because you hear the stories with these denture wares, are they insecure about their denture? Like ashamed of their denture? Oh, I think that is a, a huge, huge problem. Uh, let me give you some examples. You know, just like we talked earlier about, you know, if you go to a restaurant, you know, you're looking at the menu for what you can eat and not what you want to eat. You know, so besides having a pretty smile or being able to chew everything uh, the way they want to chew it, uh, it's a, a huge boost in their self-esteem. Uh, you know, they feel better about themselves uh, they hold themselves differently. Uh, they, it, it's amazing how they start uh, taking care of themselves better. Just, just because of their teeth? Just because of their teeth. Just because of their teeth. You know, Randy, it's like this. You know, if there's something that you don't like about yourself, whether, you know, you don't like a facial feature, uh, you don't like your teeth, yeah. you're not able to chew your food well, uh, those insecurities, those things will hold you back. I can't tell you how many times patients come in and they're, uh, they don't have a pretty smile. 
and it's like they don't look at you eyeball to eyeball. They, they you know, is they're looking away, they've got facial hair, uh, they're doing things to cover it up or to hide it. Let me tell you, when, when you give somebody their smile back, it changes everything about them. Let me give you an example. I've got a patient that uh, she came in and, you know, her teeth were kind of short and worn, uh, stained, had some spaces in between. Uh, you know, we gave her a beautiful smile. And so now she comes back on just a regular maintenance visit. I was shocked. I mean, this lady has uh, lost 30 pounds. She's quit smoking. She's totally redone her hair and her makeup. Uh, her personality has just blossomed, you know, as a result of this. So it's just, it is amazing what something that seems so simple to me, or maybe simple to you, is just life changing. Yeah, but you're, you're a dentist, and respectfully, you probably think the smile is like the most important thing. Well, of course I do, but I mean, you got to look at the facts. I mean, look at any of the major ma uh, magazines, uh, be it Cosmopolitan or Glamour or Men's Fitness. Any of these magazines are going to talk about, you know, uh, say a survey of what is the number one thing that you look for in a mate. You know, what right. what 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 draws you to your mate? What are you looking for? Smile is always number one, and if not number one, is maybe in the top three. So it is, okay. it is so, so important. Let me give you an example also of this. And, and this is something that uh, really, uh, well, let me just tell you the story. This is a young lady. She's probably uh, 17, 18 years old. She came in for just a regular you know, hygiene visit. And I noticed that uh, you know, her teeth were kind of short. She had some excess gum tissue, so I just Gave her some options of what we could do to fix that. She comes back and we just use one of the dental lasers to just, you know, sculpt the gum tissue uh, to fully expose the tooth. Such a simple thing to me. So she leaves. She ends up writing me a letter. No, I, I, I hate to say it. People don't write letters anymore, you know. <laughs> okay. But she wrote me a letter. This is a 17 or 18 year old young lady explaining to me how this had changed her life. She was talking about how, you know, she uh, never smiled, wasn't involved, everybody picked on her or made fun about her smile and her gum tissue. I mean, stories like that will just, you know, So pull. there's people like this in their 50s and 60s too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. They're that insecure about their smile? Well, sure they are, sure they are. I mean, everybody wants to have a pretty smile. People want to laugh, they want to, you know, smile and, and just enjoy now life. You say that people with bad teeth are discriminated against. What do you mean by that? Well, look at Hollywood. Look what Hollywood does uh, in a movie. If they've got somebody that's a bad character, uh, they give them uh, uh, dirty, uh, dingy teeth. Maybe they're missing a tooth. Whereas uh, if the, if the uh, character is supposed to be uh, successful, affluent, you know, they have this beautiful white smile. So, you know. So they may be prejudged that they don't have money. Absolutely. Or not it's, clean and it's or unfortunate whatever. that it's we do that, but we do prejudge people that, you know, this person's successful, this person's got a lot of money, you know, based on, you know, what their teeth look like. Uh, this person's got uh, missing some teeth, uh, uh, or, you know, their teeth aren't as white or as pretty. And, you know, we just automatically think that they're not successful. So one afternoon, it's all changed. Absolutely, one afternoon. Whether it's you know, coming in and you know, whitening your teeth or coming in and, let me give you an example. Uh, take a job interview. Let's say you had uh, uh, twins, all right? So one of them goes into the job interview, got a beautiful smile and uh, you know, is uh, happy, you know, smiling a lot. Uh, then you take the other uh, sister, and she's not smiling. Uh, who are you gonna hire? You know, one person. I guess the one that looks positive, right? Yes, yeah, the one that's smiling looks uh, positive, looks happy, uh, looks uh, uh, extroverted versus the one that's not smiling. Yeah, but what about the people that have bad gums, right? That's why they're losing their teeth. They have the bad gums. Can they still get dental implants or their gums are not good enough? No, absolutely, they can get implants. Patient that comes in, they've got gum disease or bleeding and infected gum tissue, you know. You know, if it's not possible to save the tooth, we can take the tooth out. When we do that, the gum disease or the infection is gone. So then after we do that, you know, we can take our dental laser and I can go around the other teeth and we can, you know, sterilize and clean uh, 
any disease that's still present okay. so that the patient has a clean, healthy mouth. And then we can go back and we can place the implants and it's just an ideal situation. It makes for an ideal patient. So final message, somebody watching this and they've either been told their teeth have to go or they're already wearing a denture. They're, they've watched this, but they're still skeptical. Maybe they're worried about pain or they're worried about maybe they're too old or whatever, right? What do you say to them? My advice would be to just give us a call, come into the office, let's just sit down one-on-one -on -one and just talk about what your options are. Let me you know, uh, do some imaging so that we can you know, see what your possibilities are. I mean, you just need to know what the possibilities are. We can sit down and uh, explain what the procedure, what all the steps are, so that you can really feel comfortable about you know, what we're talking about. How soon, so, so let's say if somebody goes in there today, how soon before you could tell them we could do this? I can tell them that day, uh, immediately. The fact that we have all the imaging right there, we have everything under one roof, I can sit there and I can tell you what your options are and we can just go from start to finish to you know, let you know. Right there, right, right there. there. And what, are the, what, what is their biggest fear pain? I mean, is that what they're, I mean, like on that consult, what are they asking you the most about? <clears throat> well, I, I think the first thing they're asking, one, they just, a lot of patients, they want to know, am I a candidate? Okay. And, and then after that, it's, you know, is it painful? They want to know how expensive it is. Uh, you know, a lot of patients are, you know, they, they're thinking it's very, very expensive. I mean, they're thinking, okay, I'm missing 14 teeth, so I need 14 implants. It's not like that. So, uh, you know, you know, it's, and, and, and just their, their history naturally it's gonna make them think that it's painful. So, you know, these are legitimate things that I get, I understand, and, and if we can just come in and talk, I think I can help you uh, see through it. Okay, good, and they, and they, and they get to see you Absolutely. if they come in? Absolutely. So you've made a lot of dentures over the years. Uh -huh. Would you say hundreds? Yes. Over the last 20 years? Oh, absolutely, So if they, almost 28 years. Okay, so 28 years, hundreds of dentures. Let's say they're watching this show. What do you tell them? Your I past patients. I would say, come in and let's sit down and talk about uh, putting in two or four implants and locking those dentures in place and, and let you uh, see how good your situation could be, how much more stable and enjoyable uh, life could be. Okay, good. I, I want to thank you for coming to the show. Um, if, if they want to go to your website, uh, you have information there about dental implants? Absolutely. Things like that. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Good job. Thank you. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you could help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.